thought it was about time that I gave you a quick peek of uh, what's inside here. The lid comes off quite easily. Right, I've been quite busy over the last uh, couple of weekends, bit by bit. The forecast and weather has been atrocious over the last few weekends. So it's not been easy to do big stints of time outside, but uh, I've got the framework in, so let's have a look. Hi, I'm Warren Brand and welcome to another Linley's video. I've also needed to spend some time in the garden doing gardening things like, uh, oh, attacking the grass yet again. Every year I scarify, feed, weed, deal with moss, it's, a, it's an annual thing, well, multiple times a, a year thing, of course, but with all these overhanging trees, uh, there's so much shade, uh, and I think the soil is so rubbish, uh, it's an impossible job to, to keep it tidy year after year, but I give it a go. <laughs> Looking at it now, it's just bare soil at this end, and it was only this time last year, and this time the year before, that I reseeded it all, but after Easter, with the new seed down again, it'll be better. So let's take a look at what's inside this control box. The control modules, none of the electronics, none of the cabling are there yet. I've got all of that to put in. Uh, all of it's designed, well, almost all of it's designed. The core modules are all designed. I can create a module. It takes about a day, about eight hours to create, solder up and commission a control module. That's a lot of time, but uh, and I've got lots to do. Uh, and I can do that bit by bit once I've got the control module panel established. And this is what we've got. Gonna try and do this one-handed. Right, what we have here is space. This top row will be a bank of control modules, each mounted in these plastic uh, U kind of shape profile pieces that I, I fabricate um, and there's space for 15 modules along here so f a bank a rack of 15 of these modules will go along here each fit a nestle just in this space here with a little uh, aluminium lip this is a wooden batten hardwood batten and this is an aluminium uh, lip on the front and it they just clip in here. It's the same principle design that I've used uh, very successfully in uh, the Woodgate Crescent station. So I sort of did the development work for that uh, sort of arrangement here uh, for the, uh, the Woodgate Crescent station. Um, the same, same design. For each of the modules, uh, and if you've not seen those before, you can maybe take a quick look at some of the modules I've I've installed at Woodgate Crescent. The module circuit boards go, go mounted on the inside here and all of the cables come out at the back bottom corner here. So all the cables dangle down and come into the modules here. So when I take the module out, it just goes out like this, unclips and out like that so that all the cables continue to dangle down the back. So, 15 of these all lined up here. Each of them you can see the various specialist uh, LED indicators and most of them have uh, control switches or reset buttons. And also each of them has a socket hole for plugging in the uh, computer programming lead so that I can update the, uh, print, the micro pr uh, processor on the inside, the PIC microprocessor. I fabricated um, about half a dozen of these. I buy the acrylic as a plastic window uh, sheet for uh, things like uh, greenhouses and I chop it up uh, just about, it's very difficult to cut with a jigsaw, but I managed to do that, sand the edges, and then I've got a jig um, to create the, uh, the, the sort of U, the, the, the trunk shape that uh, the plastic forms there. They're really quite robust. 
At the back here, this is not yet painted. I don't actually think it's fixed in. No, it's not. Um, is a batten of wood with a space behind. Now, the idea of that is, is I need to have a back support for these uh, modules. They're basically supported uh, one point here and at the back and with the uh, cable coming out the bottom they just sit there really nicely uh, uh, stably uh, without without wobbling or or falling forward um, the batten with a little gap at the back enables cables to go at the back there's the chance that I might need to draw cables through to to come around the side so one row, 15 modules, control. All of those will relate to all the up lines on the, the circuit. All the up lines will be controlled here. The track circuits, the power distribution, uh, the interlocking, all of the bits that relate to the up lines will be in this row here. There will be, I think, three spare, which will be generic modules that I'll need for the whole, the whole um, section. Underneath that set of control modules is a set, corresponding set of uh, cable joining uh, array here. Each of these aluminium uh, angle iron pieces, very much like this, I've cut some of these already, um, these go in, in here, will have the standard, um, what are they called, um, junction blocks, um, I, I forget what they're called, these are the 6 amp ones, they come in different sizes, these are the 6 amp ones, not that I need 6 amps of current capacity, but I just find the size of the, uh, the little holes uh, just right for the, the, the joining of all the cables. So I've got space for two sets there, two there. This then, this row here of uh, connector blocks will relate to this module. So this module will connect into here and then all the cables relating to this module will then go down the back here and out and go and out and go uh, to the various other places around the station and uh, through to the um, mimic panel. All of this uh, aluminium angle I just buy from eBay from a, a range of suppliers. I just pick the cheapest at the time. This is 38 by 38 millimeter equal angle. Um, this angle I think is 24 or 25 equal angle, and I buy some smaller as well as as well as some flat bar. I do spend quite a bit of money on al aluminium. I use aluminium simply because it just is, it's lighter to handle, easier to cut and doesn't corrode. It tarnishes a little bit, but uh, it's basically easier to, to use. So not only do I have to bolt uh, this pair to two of these on to this particular uh, aluminium strip, I've got uh, 15, uh, sets to do all the way along here as well. So there's a complete array of these uh, junction blocks all there, all lining up suitably for all of the cables to go out to the various places. To help cable management behind this bank of cable joining area here, uh, all the cables will go down the back to keep them tidy and there's another there'll be another divider at the back further down there and there's a space at the bottom also uh, as a cable tidy uh, uh, bay at the bottom. Just for the time being I've simply bolted these together using I think they're M4 bolts. Uh, what I will use are M6 bolts with captivated nuts at the back so these will be very easily removed without losing the nuts, uh, the spare loose nuts at the back because clearly as this is all covered up at the front I won't be able to get to the nuts at the back uh, to undo that, the nut will just turn. So there'll be captivated nuts all the way down here, uh, just the same as I used for the uh, other station uh, control box. 
So you might be able to predict what uh, I'm gonna say about the next bay down. With 15 uh, module control units uh, along the top section here, all of those for the up line, the corresponding down line modules are just down here. So there'll be a similar set of modules, just take that out of the way, a similar set of 15 control modules all stacked along this shelf here. So the, uh, the module units will just rest nicely here. I haven't yet put the uh, aluminium front on, obviously. Uh, that will just be a, provide that little lip to hold that uh, base back. Uh, without it, the modules can just sort of slide and rotate forward a little bit, and I don't like that with the weight of the wires uh, behind. So the aluminium front goes on there, just holds that bit back so that the weight of the wires at the back uh, keep the uh, module just pressing back at the back here onto this backboard and just resting with the, uh, the corner lip just held back with the al aluminium strip here. With uh, 15 modules for the up and 15 modules for the down lines, that gives me 30 modules. That's a lot of modules to make. There's also right at the bottom, a little area for cable management, just in this section here. So I've got spare space with a removable front panel to enable me to uh, work on all of the, the cable management bits, cables coming up from the uh, ground trunking will come up here and into this back space here and also cables will dive off to the side through this piece of conduit pipe into the mimic panel uh, unit on the side here as well. So much done but so much more still to be done. The next bit of work that I need to do is finish off the aluminium sort of structural bits of this framework so that I can get all the pieces on and off, more holes drilled, I've got the captive nuts to uh, bond in, I've got some more al aluminium angle to cut, get that in and that strip of aluminium there for the front lip. Once I've got all the aluminium in and made up uh, the remaining uh, 20 or so of these uh, acrylic uh, shaped pieces, I can then begin putting the cables in. I've already talked in previous videos about some of the cabling I've got to do in the ground under the track, all in this area through from the control panel here, the mimic panel all the way underground using the uh, trunking that I've already installed all the way through to the station area at uh, Linley's Garden Railway main station here. So much more to do. The weather's not been very kind to me. Other things need to be done. It's coming on though, looking good. Need to do some more painting, obviously. Uh, the additional bit of timber work I've put in, need to paint that. All needs a good rub down and uh, more coat of paint as well, just to keep it fresh. Uh, more uh, roofing I've got to do, uh, all of this needs finishing off uh, and the roof line at the back I still plan to finish off and bridge the gap over there. Oh look the water butt's fallen over, that's not very good is it? And uh, I'll extend from here across to just uh, in line with the fence uh, and so I can just keep this back area here more sort of waterproofed uh, and usable. I've got in mind also, whether it's viable or not, I don't know, to, with the roof here, get some lights, even somehow be able to sort of uh, put a series of doors here, uh, just to weatherproof it a little bit more, and put some shelves up so that I can put some rolling stock, uh, not, not maybe the, uh, the trains, the locos and things, but uh, maybe some carriages. Uh, on some shelves here just to get some stock storage here because it is tedious putting all of the carriages in those plastic boxes that I use um, each time I want to do a running, a bit of running. 
So I might use this as some outdoor shelving for the summertime, not, uh, not left out for long periods of time, but just uh, summertime, perhaps some day running. I can just put some stock up here on the shelf. So that would work quite well, actually. Uh, that's not quite two meters long. So most of my trains, I work up to about two meters, but that includes the loco engine. So I could get full sets of trains uh, pretty well without the loco, all, uh, all on shelves. I could get probably one, two, three, four, five trains all, uh, all on shelves here. A bit tedious to put them down on the tracks, but probably easier that than putting them in the plastic boxes that I do at the moment. Just ideas, whether they're viable or not, I don't know. Just ideas, we'll see. It's cold and damp today. I don't feel like staying out any longer, so I think I'll wrap it up here. Thank you for tuning in to this short episode this time. Just a quick update of where I am with the control modules and things. Thanks for watching and bye for now.